Hey everybody, welcome back. Back in the shop. It's Tuesday and it's hot. Really hot. It is 97 degrees. Again, I guess that's my lucky number. Today we'll be in installing the power draw bar. Yeah, it's taken me seven months to get it. Because I really didn't want to get it. But as I started doing more machining, I realized, yeah, it'd be beneficial. So I caved. So, first thing, unpackage everything, obviously, do your contents, make sure you got all the right parts. And first we'll start with the head unit. So the directions are pretty simple, just follow them. The key thing though is about the fittings. When you're using your Teflon tape, make sure you put it on right. So there is a right way and a wrong way to actually install uh, thread tape. If you're having it like this, you, you want to spin it clockwise. The reason for that is when you tear it and you go to, to thread this in to your fitting, it won't try to, try to unravel the tape. Like, here, I'll show you in a second. So I got the end up so you can better see it. So when I screw the thread in, it's not gonna try to unravel. Versus if it was a left-hand thread, I go to spin it in, it's gonna catch on that tape and try to uh, turn it off. Just a quick tip, so you make sure that you don't have any leaks. Turned in. They don't say that in instructions. But if you ever done plumbing or air fittings, you know. So now you know. So then you'll take a four millimeter wrench, start taking the door stop off. Uh, that's the stop for this guy. And you will remove all of this. This whole thing you'll remove. You'll keep this screw here, but you'll remove this guy, this guy, and this arm. So a quick tip, before you take the stop here off that holds the spindle, remove the Phillips head that's right here and then use this to hold the spindle so you can take off this nut here. Now I don't like the one that Tormont gives you. Um, this is a uh, part tool, this is uh, for bicycles. At least they make it well they make a lot of partial bicycles. I don't know if this is actually specifically for a bicycle, but nevertheless, it gets the job done. There we go. So now screw that guy off. Now take this off. So before we put the adapter on, make sure that this surface is clean, your threads are clean. Um, I cleaned this out with some brake cleaner, non-chlorinated, and put some copper anti-seize in the threads just to give them some protection. Um, clean off this, uh, this surface right here that the light is shining off of because these mate together. So you want to make sure that they're really clean. Then just screw it on down, like so, and then Use your pliers, or your pin pliers, to tighten it up. Alright, so now we're going to put the set screw in. Uh, it's brass tip because this will actually engage the threads that this is screwed onto, this adapter. Uh, before you put Loctite on it, clean the threads. And when I sprayed this off with of brake cleaner, non-chlorinated, I cleaned out the uh, threads here. I'm also going to put a set screw in after this, so double up on the set screws. If you have a bridge port, you know that they love to put double the double up on the set screws. So it just adds more um, rigidity, it locks it down better. That way I don't, I don't have to worry about the screw backing out. But a little bit of blue Loctite and send it home. Well, I do not have enough room to put a uh, Double, double the set screw. Um, this screw size is an eight millimeter by 1.25 by eight millimeter long uh, brass tip. So now it's time to install the draw bar. It comes pre-packaged just like this. Put some copper anti-seize underneath the head of the draw bar, the pocket here. And I went as far as to put uh, some anti-seize in between the Bell washers right here 
and as well as on top where they where the top parts meet at right in here. The reason for that is the belt washers when the drawbar comes down and pushes on the drawbar to release the collet or to release the tool, these flatten out like pancakes and are concave to each other. So it gives it some lubricity, uh, it gives it some lube so that the sliding forces aren't that, or as great. Uh, so let's go ahead and install that guy there. And it says in the draw, or it says in the, in, in the instructions here to apply grease here and here, which I did. Uh, but again, you can see as this press, as these press down, these squish and they squish out. So to have that lube right in here, uh, it's not going to hurt anything. If anything, it's going to help. So once you got a draw bar installed, take your collet, clean it out, clean the spindle out. They use uh, brake clean, and then coat it with the anti seize as well as the threads. Because remember, this is a new draw bar. Also, clean out the draw bar threads with uh, brake clean. So now take you a tool with no tooling in it. No emails, no nothing in it. <clears throat> Put it in the collet, tighten the drawbar, hand tight till it's snug, and then tighten the drawbar two turns. Now we're going to uh, we're going to install the eccentric mount, which just screws right on. You will have to remove. There's a pin that goes right in this area. Uh, it looks just like this guy. What I did is I just clamped it down. I could turn it, but I had a hard time lifting it out. I took a real big crescent wrench. Uh, this guy right here. I took it and put it right underneath my channel lock or my vice grip and just popped it up and it came right out. Put some anti-seize all around. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt to put it on the, on, the, on the horizontal surface of this mount, as you can see here. Now we can install the actual uh, draw bar. So you see how the draw bar and the ram, or the power draw bar, are not lined up. That has got to be lined up. So take. So you can see now, and uh, you have to apologize. I apologize for the shadow on the right hand side. But you see how now everything is lined up very well. Now we just take this, this is a five millimeter, and just tighten it down. So what I did is I had the red and black wire already here from where I routed the power wire for the fan. Now the fan works off of this guy right here, which converts 120 to 240 volts down to 12 volts, max of three and a half amps. This works off of, of like two milli, 200 milliamps. So I took the two blue wires and the power wire, which has, uh, it connects to a wall outlet. I cut that wire, I cut the, um, the wall wart off, because I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna use this to power the power draw bar, that guy. So, taped all those wires up, attached some string, and pulled this wire down uh, into the cabinet, and then used the string to pull this wire back up. Now when I pull this wire back up, I pulled a string, this one right here, and I taped it to one of the uh, input wires here, the blue wires. The reason being is if I ever need to run anything again, I have a string here that I can use to pull, uh, to pull the wire down. If I don't need a wire, no big deal. It'll just sit here uh, for the remainder of uh, eternity. So let me get this mocked up or bolted up and start wiring down there. So here's a, a better view of how you can see the wires being routed to the back, making sure that they're routed to the back via that, that zip tie I just showed. That way, you know, of course, it gives an adamant clearance for the Z-axis screw. So another, so another quick tip is I took the silver standoff right here, zip tied the wires to it, uh, kept them loose so I could still fish the wires through and adjust them. But that is so that the wires stay toward the back and not bundle up and get close to the uh, z-axis ball screw and coupler just kind of a be wary of that guys all right so got the head mounted got the 
uh, wire harness all mounted up. Um, again, I put that zip tie on the rear standoff just to keep the wires to the rear of the machine. Uh, I've got the line routed. Give it a sec, show you guys. This goes around and up. Um, had to cut these lines a little bit shorter because they were coming out about right about here. Very long. Uh, just take your take your labels, um, peel them off, get your angle and your length how you want it, cut them, uh, put your bracket up here for your zip ties to hold your pendant. Uh, just, um, not pendant, here's your switch. Takes a brake cleaner, clean that off, press it firm, and that's really it up here. I can finally get off my step stool and get back down to there to finish wiring. All right, wiring. Pretty much just follow the instructions. This is a 105, you'll move it over here. This will become 105A. 105A goes in here, 105A, 105A, 105, 105. <clears throat> it's really as simple as that. Uh, this is the part number for the input is 100, 100 to 240. Output is 12 volts, max amperage 3.5. This will drive the power drawbar as well as my fan. There is my string in case I have to run any more wires up or replace wires. But, uh, <clears throat> I mean, also a good note is the pendant here. I keep calling it pendant. The controller here, plug it into the um, ATC, the automatic tool changer. Reason being is when you go to release, it will hold it. So that way you can grab the tool, get your other hand, put it in here, and then hit lock. But uh, that's pretty daggone cool. So it's just, it's air driven. So I release it. Boom. That's all there is. Just to show the air lines. Uh, this T goes up and around. It's going to go to the left side of the machine toward the front. That's going to be the, um, there's a regulator in the back. You can see it. You can see a glimpse of it there. That's to blow parts off. Then we've got the regulator, filter, and lube system right here. It just goes up. They both follow up, uh, and then the power draw bar just goes up and around, just like so.